Oh man, are we in for a treat today. There's some strange phenomenon going on in this camper. So this will give it a little extra support on the bar for one thing, and two, it's gonna completely lock that bar from coming loose. All right, this could be the end of an episode or the beginning of one that's very interesting. <laughs> As we're getting ready to head out on a road trip here, I've got one more little upgrade I wanted to do. I was actually talking to one of our viewers, Gary, about our problem with the spare tire just seeming to come loose and kind of lower itself here and there. And Gary had a really great idea about drilling a small hole in the bar that cranks the spare tire down and putting a cotter pin through it with the theory that if it starts to rotate, it'll get caught on the frame rail and stop it from rotating, which I thought was a great idea. While well, I was talking to my friend Brian that I met at the rally, remember he's the one that gave me the little block off plate for that same area to keep mice and pests out. He mentioned that he actually made a product just for this. So what Brian made was this little block. It sets on top of the frame rail. The bottom comes up and down to adjust based on the height you need. And once we set that up, we're gonna drill a small hole through that bar and put the pin through there and let it set right on here. And this actually supports the bar that comes out to crank the spare tire down. So this will give it a little extra support on the bar for one thing, and two, it's gonna completely lock that bar from coming loose. What Brian recommended doing and what worked really well for him on his trailer was to put a little bit of silicone adhesive on the bottom and on the back sides of this before you mount it. Make your adjustments for height, and then put two screws in, which he sent me with the kit. So this should be a quick and easy install. We're gonna go ahead and knock that out now. And hopefully no more of our spare tire coming loose going down the highway. Really cost effective way to solve a problem. If you have this type of spare tire set up, check that out. I think that's gonna solve a lot of problems for us moving forward. This is pretty sweet. Thanks again, Gary, for the advice and Brian for making the product. Be sure to check out the link in the description if you have a spare tire set up like this. This could save you a lot of headaches down the road. What Cody didn't mention is that Gary has a forum page where he will show all the different upgrades that he's done to different campers and it has an option for you to be able to correspond back and forth. He's a pretty smart dude. Now, the joke was he was trouble for Cody. I try to keep them apart as much as possible at the rally because both of them were finding things that each other should buy. So he's an expensive friend. in for a treat today. We got the Traeger all set up and rolling. We're gonna make something that I really like to make around camp or really anywhere for that matter. And that's a little barbecued meatloaf. But the trick to this, and what we're gonna do here in a second, is we're gonna roll all of this out. We're gonna stuff it with cheese. We're gonna wrap it in bacon. And then we're gonna cook it at 225 low and slow until the internal temperature gets to about 160 degrees, pull it, let it rest for 15 minutes. It'll make for us a nice meal today and tomorrow. So fast forward about three hours later, our internal temperature's just above 160, which is perfect. The bacon's nice and crispy, so it's time to pull this thing off and let it rest for a little bit before we dig in. Yes, I did have to change shirts because I might got just a little bit of barbecue grease on my other one, if you're wondering. So we're gonna get this popped off here and dig in. You gonna do a taste test? Already? Yeah. It's ready? It's ready. 
Okay. I'm gonna grab a couple forks and we'll yeah. dig in. So I didn't mention this earlier, but I do the first hour at 225 degrees with a lot of smoke. And then from there, I kick it up to about 325 until it's to 160 degrees internal. That makes the bacon nice and crispy. Gives you a really good finish to this meatloaf. Hot, 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 hot. It has a really good smoke flavor to it though. That has your cheese in it right there. This one does? Mm-hmm. Angela was actually telling me earlier that when I grill, it just means more work for her. <laughs> when he cooks, he wants to do these big elaborate cooks, which is good for me in the end, don't get me wrong, but it usually means he needs an assistant. <laughs> well, so when, Isaac, I, when Isaac's here, I make him do it. <laughs> we should have waited till Isaac got here. I'm always happy for someone else to cook. We always have a huge number of crawdads right outside of our camper and it drives Eris crazy. So she's always sticking her snout down in every hole she can find to smell. <laughs> There's some strange phenomenon going on in this camper. Yeah. So we got in pretty late last night. We were visiting with friends at 4 a.m. You I, discovered. I got up to go to the restroom and there's water in the floor. Right here in this entryway to the bathroom and the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And there was a patch as though someone had just dumped a large cup of water, saturated. In this one place. In this one section. Well, first and foremost, we went and turned the water off outside just in case there was a leak to stop anything else from going on. And then we just started checking stuff. So we eliminated the sink because one, we have a sensor there and there was no water issues there. We eliminated the toilet because if it was the toilet or any of the pipes behind it, it would have ran and saturated the front part of our rug and it was completely dry. Yep. The only place was right here. Also, I dumped my jeans here because they smelled like fire smoke and they were soaked, very soaked. So this was a significant amount of water. Ceilings dry. Walls are dry. Walls are dry. We're baffled. Yeah. So then you started checking a few other things. Yeah, a few other things. I checked every other everything. So what's really <laughs> interesting about this when I went into the basement, you know, you would expect, because there are some PEX lines that run under there, that if one of those lines ruptured, it would be spraying up on the bottom of the floor, which there's like a plastic bisqueen type stuff under there. So it would have had to soak through that, through the floor and into the carpet from below. And there's no water dripping anywhere in the basement. Touched every connection, looked at every hose. There's not a drop of water to be found in this camper. And while I was under there, in fairness, I realized I'm gonna add a few more sensors because I put one behind the Nautilus on the back side of the trailer but there's all these lines that run all the way over here. So I am gonna add two more, just so if we do get a leak under there. There's some water lines that run through the bedroom dresser to the closet for the washer and dryer. Checked all those out. Everything's good. It was definitely not urine. We should say that we eliminated oh, wow. urine. Was that even a concern? <laughs> well, I wasn't blaming that. you. I was blaming the dogs, <laughs> but you know, whatever. <laughs> it had to just have dumped right here. That's the only explanation. You tend to get up in the middle of the night. I have been known to sleepwalk, although I didn't think I have been doing that recently. So we're going to go with one of those two. Sleepwalking, spilled, didn't realize it. I don't know. Halloween's upon us and we just had a phantom water spot come up in the floor. If we figure out where the water leak came from, we'll, we'll follow up and let you know. We and our friends do an annual or semi-annual hike. There's a few different hikes that we can take easy or hard so we're kind of hoping that they feel lazy like we do fingers crossed for easy don't want to do the half a day hike <laughs> and uh and then we got to get our hiking shoes on and start heading over yeah let's go score our friends want the lazy hike yes that's what happens when you get left behind on a hike Come on, Rocky. Is that it? <laughs> Is that it for today? That's it for today. I'll see you guys when you get back. Forget the hike, we're done. He's tired. 
think he got just what he wanted all along. here today left we're working through leftovers we had all the leftover meatloaf all the leftover jambalaya which was awesome yes and we were so excited about those two things that we forgot when we actually fixed this pork i don't think it was too far before that but we're kind of tempting fate so i'm hoping this doesn't poison us there's a chance that these pork tacos could make us sick and kill us is that what you're saying it's very small chance all right this could be the end of an episode or the beginning of one that's very interesting. <laughs> now yeah. we're fed, we got our exercise. Now it's time to be lazy. Yeah, it's time to light a fire and sit by it. Let's go. So after the phantom water leak situation the other day, I went ahead and ordered a couple more of these GoV sensors via Amazon Prime. So I'm about to take this whole basement wall off again and get under there and put them in a couple of strategic locations. So glad to have that. So that'll give us five total water sensors now. Pretty excited about that because I literally dream about water leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed and we'll get on to the next thing. Now that we got all the stuff out of the way, we'll just take a few screws out, pull this basement wall back, and that'll give us access to everything once again. Kind of a mess in there. This is what it really looks like under the basement of your RV. Look at this rat's nest. So I'm gonna pick a couple of centralized locations, throw these next couple of water sensors in, and we're gonna call this one done. The one thing you really don't want to do with the water sensors is to set them in the floor and like tape them or glue them down because at some point you're going to need to change the batteries so you don't want to do anything too permanent. What I've seen some people do is they'll just put a screw in the floor on all four sides so the water sensor doesn't move around too much just to keep it from shaking while you're going down the highway. The setup's super simple. You plug the hub in, let it start flashing the blue light, follow the instructions and connect it to your Govi app. And now we've got five water sensors plus our temperature sensor all in one place. Nice and easy setup. The longest thing about the whole project was tearing everything out of the basement. If you look back at our video where we installed the first three sensors, they're super loud. You're going to hear them if you're anywhere near the RV. Most people, us included, shut the water off when we're gone, so Wi-Fi is not necessary. But these things are cheap. Whatever type of sensor or brand you decide to go with, that's cool. Just think about having some sort of water sensor in your RV. The setup's super easy. The app is really intuitive if you go with GoV. Charlie says, go get the water sensors. <laughs> so I was just telling them it took all of not even five minutes to put the sensors in and get them programmed because the GoV app is really intuitive and really easy to use. The hardest part about the whole thing is just getting all the stuff out of the basement. And that's my last thing to do before I move on to other things. We really like their products and our collection is ever growing. So we'll keep you guys posted on how they do. Hopefully they don't have a reason to go off. Hopefully not. So I'm going to get this basement packed up and then. Yeah, get guess, this mess cleaned up. I guess you'll tell me what to do next. <laughs> As always. And don't forget when it's all said and done, doesn't shut with a hose in there. You smell like fish fires. 
we're kind of tempting fate. So I'm hoping this doesn't poison us. Maybe that then catch us on the next video and we're vomiting out this poison pork. So it's cool and rainy and that makes us sleepy and hungry. <laughs> well, I did make a little snack today. We're gonna see how it turned out. I made healthy cookie dough. Healthy, let's see what you think. I mean, it looks like, what's healthy about it? No? No. Lord, no. <laughs> I wouldn't feed that to the dog. <laughs> Maybe that's awful. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but... It's not that bad. It's that bad. Please don't put the recipe in the description. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one else needs to suffer. <laughs> it has a lot of protein in it. All right, so does steak. Either that didn't turn out right, or it's just a recipe for people who don't know what sugar and sweet stuff is. <laughs> if you don't think of it like cookie dough, it's not what, bad. So it's cookie dough, but I'm supposed to think of it as something else? <laughs> it's what, not cookie dough. What can I identify this as in my mind to where it would be an upgrade? A sweet fix. I mean, I think if we got another bowl, very carefully, very quickly, like started rinsing this out in cold water, we could probably salvage a good chunk of the chocolate chips, and then, <laughs> then we'd have a sweet face. <laughs> I tried. Does your wife lie to you? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>